Hello guys, in this lesson I will talk about the midbrain, the mesencephalon, and I will not discuss the pathways that much and the structures, functional structures in it. I will just discuss the morphology of the mesencephalon. So I illustrated the cross-section of the mesencephalon. You can probably already notice the cerebral crust over here, the red nucleus over here, the central gray stratum over here and colliculi over here. If you are familiar with the anatomy of the mesencephalon, you already know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then just stay with me and we will explain this in a few seconds. Here I was drawing the mammillary bodies. These two things that appear on the side right now are the medial geniculate bodies. And then we have the lateral geniculate bodies, the optic tract, over here the optic chiasm, and the optic nerve. Here is the infundibulum. Now I finish the illustration completely and we're going to discuss all these things in details. So first over here we had the lateral geniculate body and over here we had the medial geniculate body. These two round bodies over here are the mammillary bodies. There are three parts of the mesencephalon. The border between two parts is here. This part is called the tectum. And this part over here ends close to this dark structure called the substantia nigra. And this part is called the tegmentum. The part ventral from the substantia nigra is called the cross, cerebral cross. The tegmentum and cerebral cross together are called the cerebral peduncle. So we had the tectum, tegmentum, and the cerebral cross. Now, in tegmentum, you can notice that it has a shape something like this. If you look at from behind, from this perspective, you would see four round bodies. Those bodies are called the colliculi. They are divided into superior ones and the inferior ones. So we have the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi. And if we make a cut over here, you would see two superior colliculi, just like they are illustrated here. Those two upper colliculi are important for vision and vision reflexes, and the lower colliculi are important for sound reflexes. Now in tegmentum, we have the red nucleus, and the red nucleus is a structure that is involved with the motor coordination. The tegmentum itself contains the motor neurons and these motor neurons are called the reticular formation. So this over here was the red nucleus. This over here were the superior colliculi. This over here was the central gray stratum. And this over here this structure is the cerebral aqueduct. It is a tiny canal that connects third and fourth ventricle. This canal over here, this aqueduct is what separates the tegmentum from the tectum. So we have the tegmentum over here and the tectum over here. Now let's get back to the cross cerebri. This over here, this part and this part is the cross cerebri. It contains only the ascending pathways. It contains the efferent tracts. There are four of them. One over here is the temporospinal tract. Another one over here is corticospinal. And then comes the corticonuclear tract. And the last is the frontopontine tract. 
And at the end, I would like just to point out two things. This over here was the interpeduncular fossa. That is the place where the oculomotor nerve leaves the brain. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out is that this over here is the optic highest. It is the place where the optic nerves exchange fibers. From two sides of the eye you have the fibers coming in and same on the other side. What happens here is that to these fibers cross and one part of these fibers, one half, does not cross and they continue on to go like this. To learn more about this and to learn more about which side of cortex is responsible for which eye, please check out my other videos and please check out my website flashbrainanatomy.com.